Well, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell speaking carefully about the path of rate cuts, saying he did not want to send a message to markets, but he did suggest that keeping rates high for, for too long could have negative effects. If we loosen policy too late or too little, we could, we could hurt economic activity. If we loosen policy too much or too soon, then we could undermine the progress on inflation. So we're very much balancing those two risks, and that, that's really the, the essence of what we're thinking about these days. Joining us now, Claudia Sam, Sam, consulting founder and former Federal Reserve Board economist. Claudia, it's good to see you. As has been written about a lot recently, including by you, there's that balance of risks, but maybe the balance is shifting. Do you think that um, that Jay Powell adequately captured that in his uh, in his testimony today? j Powell did a great job today communicating. This really is one of his strengths, getting a clear message across. And it's a difficult one. The, the most important balancing that we've seen is inflation has come down. That is going to be the reason when the Federal Reserve begins to cut interest rates. We've made a lot of progress. We're not there yet, but we've made a lot of progress. A potentially worrisome sign, and yet there is it's important what's going on in the labor market. And he was very clear multiple times the labor market has cooled, translation from Fed speak. The inflation risks are not coming out of the labor market. We're not the labor shortages. We're not the, you know, the, the price pressures. That is so important. And yet we have come out of this cooled period in a very strong place. An unemployment rate just above 4%, that's really good, right? So we're still balancing risks, but we are balancing risks in a place that frankly was unimaginable a year ago. Like it was supposed to take a recession to make this kind of progress which would not have been the way to go. <laughs> Claudia, I, I'm, when you are watching the labor market, what data, what specific metrics are you watching, Claudia? I'm curious. Everything. Uh, it, the labor market is so essential to what's happening with uh, what will end up happening with American consumers, and that feeds back into the, the labor market. And then that's the whole economy, right? So we, it's just so essential. The tricky thing when watching the labor market is you have to look for the subtle signs, right? When you talk about the risks that are that are brewing, because by the time we're having hundreds of thousands of people losing jobs at once, then it's too late for policymakers. Like the Federal Reserve, it has tools that take some time to work. They don't want to wait until that point, right? They want to see the signs, the, the more subtle signs. And that means you have to really get down in under the hood and look at what is uh, could be going in a good direction or a bad direction. And that's the stage we're at because things are good in the labor market. There are some signs of weaknesses. And yet there's nothing that is, you know, the alarm bell is sounding right now, thankfully. But you're, you know, keeping an eye on all the pieces. But, you know, so everything from unemployment to payrolls to who has those kinds of jobs. And for this cycle, it's been so unusual to really look how we are in the kind of healing process. By getting back to something that looks like normal has been important. Um, Claudia, since you're here, of course, we have to talk about the SOM rule. I think we, I, I know you probably don't want to talk about it every time, but it, but it, you know, it has been creeping closer. This this SOM indicator that you developed, mm -hmm. um, looking at the three month at month average change in the unemployment rate. Um, as a potential indicator of recession. As it happens, our Jared Blickery wrote about that in this morning's uh, Yahoo Finance Morning Brief mm -hmm. newsletter. And he pointed out that if either one of the next two unemployment prints is 4.2% or more, it could trigger the SOM rule and show that potentially that's a recession indicator. How, how are you currently thinking about that? Right, well, you will notice the answer to the last question was not, I'm just looking at the SOM rule. Right. Uh, it is important to look at the changes in the unemployment rate. That is a, an important dynamic. It has been very consistent. What the, what the recession indicator does is it's trying to get at this, what, what's the threshold for that increase that is that happens right inside of recession. So recession's already started. It's not a forecast. But what can we say very reliably in the past? And we're getting close to that threshold. Now it's a, a it's a pattern that has held up held up very well in the past, and I do not discount it. And yes, these increased the unemployment rate, you know, clearly are getting to a place that is uh, consistent with recessions we've seen, and perfectly so since the nineteen since nineteen seventy. So we don't want to discount it. There have been some very unusual features of this cycle with uh, the labor force. We had millions of people drop out of the labor force when COVID showed up. 
been very disruptive. In the past few years, we've had millions of immigrants come in and help build those labor shortages. And one reason unemployment rate goes up, when you have a lot of people coming in to look for jobs, it takes new job seekers some time. It's good we've got them. That's going to help our productive capacity and ability to you know, meet demand down the road. And yet, for a while, it can temporarily increase the unemployment rate. So that's going on under the hood. We don't know how much of that's going on versus there's just less demand for workers. And that's, those are the signs that typically would feed into a recession. And Claudia, I'm just interested, why did you create um, the SOM rule in the first place? What was sort of the motivator there? And to the extent that it has worked, that it's, it's reliable, uh, can you quantify that, Claudia, for us? Well, what's, the, what's the batting average there? I did not get in this business to like uh, pontificate about recessions and if they were here or coming. No, the, the reason the indicator exists is I had a policy proposal to start fiscal stimulus, send out stimulus checks in, in particular as soon as a recession hits. So have kind of that, that frontline defense against recessions to help people and get it tied to economic conditions so it just goes out the door when it's time. And that, that was the reason and that's why it needed to be simple wants to be in legislation and it needs to be highly reliable because it was to help drive policy. Now, it was designed for fiscal policy, which can act very quickly. Having it in a discussion about what should the Fed do? Is it time to cut interest rates? That's not what that tool is thinking about because Fed policy interest rates, they take more time to work, right? You would never, if I were to design an indicator for the Fed, it would not be one like the SOM rule because it's much more in in the moment. So, so, Claudia, to be clear, you think the Fed should start cutting in September, right? You don't think they should wait for the SOM rule to be triggered? The Fed, I think the Fed has a very good case to begin a gradual reduction in interest rates based on the path of inflation itself. That so we have made a lot of progress and you want to be able to do this gradually and the Fed should be out of the way, so to speak, by the time we get to the 2% target. And it's to me, it's very clear looking at the data, looking through a lot of the noise that we had at the beginning of this year that where we are headed. And we want to do this gradually. And I think the risks are building, particularly now that the, that the uh, labor market has showed some then the labor market has quote unquote normalized. Like we're really kind of back to where we were before the pandemic, which was a very good place for the labor market. And inflation has not totally, but largely normalized. It's made a lot of progress to 2%. The one thing that has not begun to normalize is the federal funds rate. So, you know, getting all of that synced up together is the, the Fed's next challenge. And I, given what we know now, it's appropriate for the Federal Reserve to get going on the cuts. Claudia, always love having you on the show. Thanks for making time for us. Thank you.